here's what I want you to do, okay? From zero to 100, give a score, okay? Mm-hmm. Give a score of where they're at, 100 being full-blown establishment, zero being anti-establishment. Okay. Fair? Mm-hmm. Ron Paul. You know, I don't know. All I know is how much I love the way he talks about. Uh, I do too. Just give a number. What do you think? Nobody's going to fact check you. It's I, your opinion. I, I would say, I don't know, 60, 70. Okay. Tulsi Gabbard. Maybe 50. I don't know. Tulsi Gabbard. Uh, I can't. This, this, I, I don't really like this. Uh, <laughs> but I tell you why I'm asking this question. I'm really, I'm, I'm really curious. Well, because if you, if you don't mind. So what do you think Tulsi is? Zero to 100. Uh, you know, she's showing, I would say 50. Okay. What would you say Newsom is? Oh, 100. <laughs> McConnell. 100. McCarthy. 100. Oh, McCarthy's on Matt Gates. Uh, uh, I don't know, 70? Okay, interesting. Yeah. That's why I'm asking the question. AOC. But, I mean, Matt Gates stood up against war. I he's, agree with he's, you. He's putting in an anti war right. legislation yeah. to stop the funding of the Ukraine. And by war. the way, the case against them was dropped yesterday. Of I don't course, know if you saw that course. or not. Okay, how about, uh, how about AOC? Oh, I, 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 100. Shit, okay, 100. Bernie. 100. Well, Bernie's actions are a hundred. Okay, uh, Trump. Uh, well, he went. You know, he's like I said. He 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 wasn't an imperialist as much as other people were. He was, but he wasn't as much. Um, he did talk about the deep state, but he didn't do anything. He said he was going to do. He said he was going to bring everybody jobs. And he was going to give everybody health care, and he didn't do any of those things. But he did give people. He did give billionaires and uh, a trillion dollar tax cut, just like everybody. And so why do they hate him? They hate him because he once in a while would tell the truth that you're not allowed to tell. Like there's a deep state, a permanent state that actually runs things. There's uh, And Chuck Schumer also also said that about Donald Trump. When, he, when Donald Trump was telling people that the CIA and the FBI, there is a deep state and they're the ones pulling the strings on yeah. this stuff. Chuck Schumer said it's really foolish of him to yeah. do that because uh, if you go against the CIA, they got six ways to Sunday yeah. to get back at you. No, that's the leader of the Democratic Party in the Senate <laughs> saying that the president of the United States should be afraid of the CIA. Right. He said it on fucking camera, and nobody, and everybody was like, "Trump's crazy." What? No, <laughs> Chuck Schumer just told you who runs this goddamn country, yep. and the president better watch his ass. He better not cross the CIA. That's what the leader of the Democratic Party said. Who, by the way, he's not a leader; he's a puppet of Wall Street. How does Ch- a guy like Chuck Schumer, who I know you wouldn't even ask directions to the fucking freeway from, I wouldn't either. These guys. How does he get to be a leader? Because he's the biggest. Him and Mitch McConnell, right? They get. They get. Uh, they're the biggest marks. Wall Street, military industrial complex, health insurance, big pharma. They give them all the money because they're the most corrupted. And then they take that money and they give it to their colleagues to, so they can go get reelected. And then they have to vote for them as leader, not because they're leaders, but because of the most corrupted pieces of shit in Congress. And that's why the country's like the way it is right now because we're run a hundred percent by corruption. Okay, so Trump's wrote a hundred. Like I said, I, don't, I would eighty-five. Okay, so go to Nikki Haley. I don't know Nikki Haley. Okay, fair really enough. Let's don't. just let's just keep going. But so I Nick, did see Don Lemon. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, that was not good. What How about DeSantis? About? DeSantis. Uh, I, I don't. I, I DeSantis was uh, was better on COVID than other people. So I would say ninety-five. Okay, uh, <laughs> so you give Trump Lord and DeSantis interesting. So how about Michelle Obama? Hundred Hillary Clinton. Hundred. Okay. So so now let's 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 do something. Let's. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you a question. Let's stay on this topic here. So if if out of everybody you said it's interesting, you identify yourself as a. You would would you say you're a progressive? Uh, oh, again, I don't want to put words in your mouth. What would you say you are yourself politically? I would say I'm politically homeless. Uh, I, but I, I, I call. I used to call myself a progressive. I don't do that anymore because Hillary Clinton started calling herself a progressive. So I can't be that. So I just call myself a, a lefty, or an old style lefty. Old know? style lefty. Yeah, I'm for liberal or lefty. You're not John F. Kennedy lefty, lefty right? Wow. Well, I mean, he the CIA killed him, right? I mean, I don't know what that means. I mean, I'm an RFK lefty. I know that. Okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm anti-imperialism, I'm anti-war machine, I'm pro-worker, I'm pro-Medicare for all, I'm free speech, Abs- I'm, you know, p- people say, oh, is it is an absolutist? Yeah, yeah, I, that's why we have a First Amendment, and the answer to bad speech is more speech, not censorship, so, as we're learning through the Twitter file. Yeah, so, so for me, you know, you know what I think about? I think now, you about- know people are going to clip this. 
and say, look, Jimmy Dore says DeSantis of course is anti-establishment. Jimmy Dore says Trump is anti-establishment. I'm not saying that. Yeah. I'm saying they are the establishment. They're still going to do it, by the way, just so you know. They're still going to clip this. I know. So, so you know that. But but he, he, here's, a, he, here's a question for you. So you think the right person for the job is ever somebody you fully like? Uh, no. Okay. So you think the right person for the job you have to like 100% of everything they do, and you have to agree 100% with what they agree with? No. Okay. So could the person that's the right person, what are the qualities of the right person for this job? So purely not policies, but qualities. What are the right qualities of somebody that would be the right person for this job to go against the establishment? We need, qualities. We need, someone, I, I was, uh, we need someone who's actually going to stand up for what they believe in, Shama Sawant. She's the real deal. Qualities. Give me qualities. She, uh, her quality is honesty, okay. integrity, uh, and I don't know what the word would be, but um, like her salary, uh, she will only take as much money as the average salary in her district, and she gives the rest away. That's a real deal. I don't know what you call that. But she's real, and she put, she's, she's where the rubber meets the road. And that's the kind of politician I look for, people who care. They, they know what it's like to struggle. Can she be bought? I don't think she can be bought. Okay, so, so let's, let's put that down. I think, I think we're getting something. So you said honest, integrity, which, by the way, it's very hard for us to really measure that, those qualities. You know that. That takes five, ten years until we really know if a person is honest and has integrity, but you said is not for sale. Okay, let's put that. Right. What else? Let's 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 figure out some of these qualities here. Th th is it fair to say that the person uh, uh, cannot be afraid of being trashed, destroyed, labeled, shit talked about? You know, backstabbed. You cannot thick fear. Skin. What do you call that? Is, do we skin. want to put thick skin? Yeah. Is that fair? Okay. I would say thick what, skin. What else would you say for the quality of this person? Uh, uh, courage. Courage. What else? I agree. Do they Every have to have their own money? Do they have to be? Does it help if they have their own money? You know, that's tough. I mean, Shama Sawan certainly doesn't. So I know. I think integrity. No. I mean, it, you sure? Like it? Like for like? So like, if someone like you ran, right? Yeah. You wouldn't need their money. Yeah. So that would give you a certain amount of freedom. Right. Right. So right. yeah, I mean, I understand that idea. Yeah. Uh, so if you do, if you need their money, you become a puppet of them. But, but I guess we said that already. You know, instead of saying not need money, it's not for sale. Okay. Not so for you're sale. not. You know. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Let's put that slash has their own money. Yeah. Whatever. Okay. What else? Because I think this is very important. Because for me, let me explain to what I'm doing here with you. So our staff were sitting there. We're having a conversation about who we need the specific chief executive position that we're trying to hire for, and there's debate amongst the group board who's the person to hire. One group said, I think it's this person, that person, this person, and we're having a very, very big debate. I said, before we have this wasting time debating this, write out the job description and the qualities of this individual to fit the criteria, and then let's go recruit that person, right? That's what I'm doing right now. So, so far, for us to have somebody that is not afraid to go up against these bullies that we know from both sides, this is what we have so far. Honesty, integrity is not for sale, has their own money, thick skin, courage. What else would you say? Do we want to add anything else to this? Compassion. Right? Compassion. Because you want okay. somebody who's going to care That's about good. I people. agree. That's, That's a good, good one. one. Good call, Rob. What else would you say? I mean, this is, you know, what What else would you put on this list here? Well, somebody said conviction. Okay. let's I put like conviction. Conviction. Is, is there anything else you want to add to it? I think that's. Uh, we Let's start get, with that. Yeah, just not being okay. bought and having courage is so, a good start. So, so for me, when when you when you explain this to me, I I uh, uh, I hate to say this, and I know people are gonna lose their minds when I say this, including yourself. There's only one name I think about. Uh oh. You know, you know the name. Who? There's only one name you put on this list here. You're gonna put Trump. There's only one name. What's the name? He said it. Trump. Let me explain to you why. Yeah, by, by, by the way, let me explain to you why, though. Okay. Let me explain to you why. The challenge with everything you said, when you said, well, you know, he didn't even do it. Look at him. He said he's going to go to the CIA. And then Schumer said what? You know, you realize what they're going to do? You realize they got six. All this stuff that you said about CIA. Of course. Do you, do you think a, take a company that's been around for 20 years. Let's change it. Take a company that's been around for two years. Okay. They got 42 employees. You become a CEO. Are those people who are 42 employees, are they fully, fully loyal yet? Or it's just too start of a company. They can still too early, say, no, we need somebody that knows what they're yeah. doing. They'll flip to you immediately if you're a good CEO, right? Okay. 
Take a company that's 10 years and you come in. Maybe there's a little bit more loyalty. It's going to be hard to flip these guys, right? Take a company that's 40 years. You're going to have a hard time flipping. So you got to fire a lot of people, right? Take a company that's 100 years. Take a company that's been around since 1776. Let's just call this company USA, okay? And you come in and you want to really, the way these guys have been country club politicians, and you want to break that apart, are you, you don't have one enemy. That's right. You don't have two enemies. You don't have 100 enemies. You have hundreds, if not thousands, of enemies who will not let you ruin what they've been able to convince the American people of doing. To be able to pull that off, it takes a very unique individual who is not going to be liked by a lot of people, who is accustomed to not being liked, who is accustomed to having thick skin, who's accustomed to negotiating with dirty people, politicians, business people. He's well dealt with everybody who's accustomed for that. I'm not telling you he's the guy. But if you're saying you want somebody to go up against the establishment, I ask you names. You couldn't come up with names. The lowest score you gave out of all the presidential candidates was only Trump. That's the lowest score you give. Out of all the names, and outside of Tulsi Gabbard, because you gave Tulsi like a 50 is what you gave. You gave Ron like a 50, I think, but Ron is not going to run. Tulsi could run. This is not a regular person's job is all I'm saying. It's not a regular person's job. To be this person, like the other day, you know, AOC posted a picture. I don't know if you saw this or not. She posted a picture of, uh, uh, of uh, what do you call it, herself with Lula, okay, from Brazil. Mm. And you mentioned Brazil. That's why I'm bringing up Lula. Mm-hmm. And if you see this picture, go all the way down, keep going down, keep going down. She tweets a lot, so it's kind of tough to catch up. You're probably not going to get to the picture, but it's a picture of her and Lula. Okay. And she says something about it's so great to have a leader like this who's brave and courageous, et cetera, et cetera. And then two posts later, you know what she posts? She posts a picture with Elon Musk and Rupert Murdoch yeah. at Super Bowl. And then she says what? Birds like... Birds of a feather flock together. Right? And then you're like, wait a minute. If that's the yeah. case, yeah, what are you doing? two posts ago, yeah. you are Lula, and Lula came to U.S. I retweeted mm-hmm. Biden's mm-hmm. picture, and I said, is Lula in America to get another car wash? Yeah. <laughs> if you know the car wash, yeah. what he did was stealing. Not the jato. Yeah, all that stuff. So, yeah. so the point, all I'm saying, this, this, that, but, this person, Jimmy, you're probably not going to like the person to go up against the establishment. You're probably not going to like him. I would, what do you think? I would, I, I would, I would like Joe Rogan to run. I, he ain't gonna do it. I know he won't do it. But he won't I, do it. I, you know, I think he. I think the world, a lot of people would want to have a guy like that run. Yeah. I don't know. And, and, I don't know if he's. So I think it. he has all those qualities. I don't oh, yeah. disagree. And, and, I don't and, disagree. And didn't come from the establishment because you know he wasn't a politician. But right. Jimmy, I wanted to ask you when we were talking about it, and I think one of his biggest mistakes for Trump was coming in and right off the rip going, "I'm going to drain this swamp." And we've said this before in the podcast, Jimmy. When you drain a swamp, if you think about, it, you take all the water and shit out. You think alligators and snakes are going to go? <laughs> hey, we're going to go to another. They're going to go crazy. So, so here's my thing. And it was funny we were talking about Carlin. I was listening to George Carlin on the way here, and it was like towards the end when he's like, the, with the government stuff, he goes, "It's a big club." You ain't ain't in. That's right. Mm -hmm. None of us are in it. So my thing is, that breaking point, Jimmy, that we're talking about, that that moment where we're in the streets, and I'm just like you. I I I've sacrificed some of my career because I finally started talking about it, and it really bothers me that you know we're stuck in this in this rut. And I always say for people to get into the streets. But do you think that this deep state and all this the system is so set up against us? Even if we have that moment, Jimmy, where we're there, we're we're ready to go. They own all the all the they own all the government. They own mm-hmm. everything. We kind of can't really. If we win the streets, Pat, and was an actual revolution. The national guards getting deployed. Everybody's all the cops. Everybody's gonna turn on us because that you know they they run the show. The government runs all them. How loud? How loud do you think that we can actually get? And what would be the breaking point for everybody to go? Okay, we're. We're done. Do you think there even is a breaking point? Well, that's what I keep asking that question. Like, what's happening right now in Palestine, Ohio? I'm like, when when are people, <laughs> when are they going to stop th- just taking it? I don't understand what happened. So it has to come from the grassroots. It has to, I think it has to come from a worker-led kind of a thing and, you know, more of a Christian Smalls kind of a reaching out, econ- you know, an economic alliance of the of the classes, working class, I mean. So it is a class war that's happening. And so... And they won. It's all over. Uh, yeah. and, and they control the, They can. I mean, it's just so obvious that our, our government is completely controlled, which is why they can't give you health care while they they can't bring clean water to Flint, Michigan. You know, they have billions of dollars in the Ukraine aid so they could get clean water in Ukraine. <laughs> they won't do that yeah. for the United States. I have a question for you, Jimmy. Yeah. 
This is gonna be kind of a crazy question, but just go with me, All okay? Right. So we're we're railing on the establishment right now. The establishment, the establishment, the establishment. So the argument these days is should we just tear it all down and start anew or fix sort of the problems? Here's my question. So when I think of establishment, I think of, well, the Supreme Court. I think of Congress. I think of uh, the military. I think of the office of the presidency. I think of NATO. I think of all the different alphabets, CIA, FBI, every, throw everything you want in there, right? Every single department of this, education, agriculture. Isn't that what kind of made America what it is today, these establishments? Now, there's bad actors within the establishments that we need to get the fuck out of there. Term limits, bad actors, lobbyists that are operating within the shadows of the government that they need to get the hell out of there. Crazy question, but aren't these establishments established for a reason and we just need to have better people in there and hold them accountable but also well, have, maintain the establishments well you have to have institutions i'm not that's what i mean yeah institutions yes. correct you have to have institutions but look at a guy like fauci right so a guy there he's mm -hmm. there 43 years why do you these are bad actors bad people yeah right so this system that but we it's have, not the system but, of the nih that's bad right but, right that the idea to have an fda or a cdc right. or niaid this is, these are good things you need to have these things but the way they're funded is completely ridiculous right now the uh, the big pharma funds 70% of the FDA, so they're mm -hmm. completely capped. So we have corporate capture of our regulatory agencies. And so that's what I'm talking about. We need to, first of all, start getting money out of politics so we can yeah. get our, our institutions back, our, back to serving the people so instead of serving press. I agree with you. We want to... To maintain these yeah. establishments, yeah, you gotta have and these institutions, but with the right people. So, so everything you want to throw with the big in there, right? You want to throw big pharma, uh, uh, the military industrial complex, right? Uh, uh, big oil, big tech, all these big stuff that have sort of corporatism has come within these establishments and reached around and grabbed their tentacles all about them. We just want to get them out. So I think that the reason that I'm asking these questions is because we do want to maintain these establishments. We do want to maintain what has made America great, for a lack of a better term, but get the nonsense out of it. So I think it's like a very nuanced discussion and argument, not fuck the establishment. We kind of need the establishment you know, to maintain America. So why was it the, like, for instance, a lot of people would say, "Hey, why don't we nationalize the, you know, the oil industry, right? Because that's our oil. It's the it's the country's oil. It's not Exxon's oil." Why? And then whenever a country tries to do that, the United States tries to coup that government, right? So. Yeah, we. I. I wouldn't. Even with the vaccine, like other people have made the point, like why wasn't that nationalized? Why were they allowed to make a hundred billion dollars off of COVID? Mm -hmm. One company, which people have no idea how much money that is. You know, the the recording industry in the United States, every piece of music that's recorded and released generates twelve billion dollars a year. A hundred billion dollars went to one company yeah. for COVID. I mean, that's the kind, and that a hundred yeah. billion dollars is enough to buy everybody in the media and buy everybody in government, and that's. We're living in a corrupted place, which is why people think ivermectin was horse pace instead of what it actually is, uh, a miracle drug that has saved billions of lives. And it's safer than aspirin. So they wanted to make you think it was scary. But that's because and it all started with Bill Clinton in 1996 when he did the Telecommunications Act. And people don't realize that we used to have 50 giant media companies in America. And then Bill Clinton passed the Telecommunications Act, which took us down to six, which is why journalism sucks so hard in America because they, cause they mm -hmm. all work for the same people they were right they were competing for the licenses Bad. it was insane by the way that's a very big point he just made right there about the whole we had we went from 50 to a handful uh and that hurt a lot of uh people because you didn't have more voices and, and uh, until this format came out where yeah. guy like him or yeah. rogan or you, us or we can go out there and talk and say what we're saying we're like wait a minute what what are these guys who are these guys that kind of makes sense let me google yeah. this let me and research they, this but then you see the narrative is we're we're alt-right we're mental we're radical i don't know if they say that about you but they say that about me yeah. that i'm an all i'm an all right conspiracy theorist because i was right about russia gate i was right about syria i'm right about covid and so that's what they so they have have narrative control yeah. and if you look at the journalists and the twitter is the perfect example when the twitter files came out and matt taibbi was exposing stuff like that and uh they were all shitting on him as if he's some kind of an idiot mm -hmm. for doing breaking a story about corruption of social media and the government and so you see there the narrative control that's what journalism is that's what cor corporate journalists are there for to control the narrative and if they don't control the narrative they have to start disappearing people and that's a lot harder yeah. yeah, very important part about the narrative. Like, for instance, you just called yourself a lefty, your words, mm -hmm. and now you're quote-unquote alt-right.
That they call so me that. Which one are you, Jimmy? I'm lefty. But they, this is the problem. They, they try is, to discredit me by calling me all. This right. is the problem, and I just kind of revisit what you were talking about earlier with Putin, for example. This is the problem with just dismissing and throwing a label on somebody. So it's so easy to be like, Putin's crazy. Yeah. Yes. Or uh, or Zelensky's a hero. That's right. And that's it. And and most people, what I often say are most people are most people. Uh, we talk about like most people are living paycheck to paycheck, trying to get by, raise their family, raise their kids, fucking just day to day, work to work. You want me to get into a nuanced discussion about the Donbass region right. of whether the military industrial complex is making money on Putin and the NATO alliance? It's like, let me just try to get paid in later. Okay, yeah. Right, buddy? So that, that it's just easy to just label Putin's crazy. Zelensky's the hero. He's going to be the man of the year. All right, cool. Jimmy's all right. Let's keep it moving. Bye. But it's not so simple like that, That's is your correct. point. That's correct. And, and going back to what you're saying, though, when you said, you know, aren't some of these, you know, uh, FDA, aren't, aren't some of these, uh, you know, institu not institutions, aren't some of these establishment yeah. departments, whatever you want to call them, necessary? Okay. So in a company, when a person comes in, you see how many dumb departments there is that you're funding. You, you, you go through, when you hire a CFO to come in and you do uh, uh, higher forensics uh, auditing for your own mm -hmm. company that you're taking over, you're about to buy. So you're about to buy a company that's got a lot of issues. You come in, you're going to spend a lot of money auditing that business. So when we were being bought, there was people auditing every single thing on or, or what statement, expenses, credit card, what's this, what's that, why are you spending this money, your OPEX, your hiring, how, how the, everything is being audited, right? And then you're like, dude, this is a waste. That's a waste. We can help you with this. So then the buyer is sitting there saying, that's six hundred thousand dollars a year you uh, you uh, putting here. That it will be a waste because we'll take it. Don't worry about it. We're going to save that money. So that's an additional six hundred thousand dollars in EBITDA. That million dollars you're spending here. That two million dollars you're spending here. We can save money in those following areas, right? So when a person comes in, this whole thing with transportation uh, czar, which is who. This oh, wonderful guy, this, oh, this amazing, amazing guy, Pete Zara, Buttigieg. I like he threw his arm. Do, do, you know, do you know what we're starting to realize with everything that happened? Has he gone to any of the spots, by the way? I don't has he gone, no, to, Ohio, no, has he gone no, to Palestine? Has no, he gone to Michigan? No, has he gone to Detroit? No. Has he gone to any of these places? No. Okay, FYI, the same guy that you didn't like, let me ask you a question. If this guy was president, <laughs> the guy you don't like, honestly, Jimmy, yeah. honesty, if this guy was president today, you're a, you're a straight up guy. How long before he goes to Palestine? You mean Trump? Yes. How long before he goes to Michigan? How long before he goes to the well, border? Well, he was president, and he didn't fix the water in, in Flint, Michigan. You're, you're expecting him to do it in what? In, in four years. In four years while he's getting trashed with Russia? No, I mean— While I'm, he's got a hundred other issues he's dealing with? Because here's—again, here's, here's again, this is what it goes back to. The challenge with you wanting the candidate— your, uh, uh, your, uh, and by the way, if we think we've seen dirt and smear campaigns on him, we're about to see more. a whole different, and yeah. we're going to see it on DeSantis. How and much we're gonna more see are they going to find on I'm, Trump? I mean, they, they they're going to do it. <laughs> they, they're going to do a lot of I that stuff. Find except, more. except for him, he has now got the lead on smear campaigns on all of them, of with course. every Twitter files, everything that's coming out. And now that Elon Musk owns Twitter, it's a different game today than yeah. it was in 20. 20 than today. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.